Hey everyone, welcome to day two. Now that we've been through day one, it was pretty full on yesterday, wasn't it? And did you do your homework? Did you fill out the form, which now I've lost, which I was just going to bring up when I had it on my desktop, which I did. Ah, oh, where is it? Give me a moment. While I clear some space. But how did you define abundance? You know, when you wrote it down in your journal, how did you define it? Did you define it, what, as just having money or? So here's our journal and the first question is, how do you personally define abundance? So where did you, where do you think the de that definitions come from and has it changed for you over the years? What's it mean? I mean, we went through all different stages of abundance, didn't we? Whether it was family, whether it was health, friends, whether it was in business, whether it was financial abundance. And then and the next part of the homework was, so what does an abundant life look like for you? And I, the question was to make you think about every area of your life from spirituality to relationships to work and tune into your heart and remember that this is for you, nobody else. So where do you already feel abundant in your life? What areas do you struggle to feel enough or like you have enough? And do you compare yourself to others? I mean, that's one of the biggest things that we all do, isn't it? So what areas of life do you do this the most in? And in today's session, I'm going to close that now, move that out the way, move into where I am. We're going to go even further. You know, we think of abundance in so many different ways. And as I said, I wanted you to consider every facet of your essence, from, from the depths of your spirit to the tendrils of your connections to the world around you. So the answers that emerge from, the, from sitting and thinking about that are really unique to you. And then you start to weave this beautiful tapestry with the threads from your own soul, from your heart. And then you unleash and start to move in to the enchantment of, of discovery, of venturing forth into, oh, I want this life. This is how I want it to look. And what things intrigue me? What knowledge do I want to learn? Or what things do I want to become part of? And that's when the magic starts to unfold as we start to step into being it. As I said, you have to be it first to see it. So we have to peer into the depths of our mind sometimes and our spirit and ponder. Ponder what it is that we want. Ponder who we want to be. Ponder how we want to live. And look at money and look at wealth, prosperity and the journeys that we've taken which have led to the beliefs that we hold. And as I said, a lot of those beliefs come from our childhood. So as we, we delve deep into the essence of our relationship with money, with abundance, this elusive thing that we never seem to have enough of, then we have those treasures unfold before us. So why gratitude? Because we started talking about gratitude in the last module and, and we started talking about how an abundance mindset 
starts to involve gratitude. So if things are not going the way you wish they were, developing a feeling of gratitude in any circumstance is the key to starting to shift it. And really gratitude or positive thinking is not the default mode for most of us. Most of us uh, have been brought up with negativity because that's how the mind works. That's how our mind works. And it's really about less about our personalities. It's more about our nature. And when you think about the fact that uh, as cavemen and women or way back in those times, our ancestors had so many natural predators and enemies, we constantly were in needing to scan the environment for threats and hypervigilance was required for survival. And we still have that hypervigilance in a lot of cases and it can cause our unhappiness because we're, we're constantly looking for things that can go wrong or imagining dangers and we can more easily feel stuck and intimidated and it stops us or it can keep us from looking at the good things in life and appreciating what we have in the present moment. So even though it's in our DNA to look for things that can go wrong, that doesn't mean we can't flip it. That doesn't mean we can't change it. You know, one of the things that we know from research, and I can't quote the research um, documents off the top of my head, but one of the things we do know when they did the cortisol levels of people who were sitting at their desk if they had a high stress pressure role where they had to meet certain conditions for their jobs, then they were in flight or fight mode. But they couldn't move. So we know that that impact on their physiology was major. The fact that their biochemistry, so their cortisol levels, were really high because they were constantly on guard. They constantly were under pressure. They were tr constantly, unconsciously, they were in survival mode. And so it's fight, flight, or fixed, isn't it? So you're stuck, you can't move. And how many of us have been in those situations? You know, you can't run away, you can't fight, you have to stay, and so you have to, to deal with it. But when we're talking about abundance and changing our lifestyle, with practice, we can expand our capacity to experience and receive abundance. And all we have to do is to start to look for the good already around us. And this is just a, not a one-time activity. We have to adopt an abundant mindset. So we need to develop a daily gratitude practice. And probably you notice people around you who seem to have the, the gift of a positive attitude. And uh, most of us weren't born that way, but we've trained ourselves intentionally to look for reasons to be grateful, reasons to be thankful every day. You know, even if it's just waking up in the morning and you're still breathing, you know, you've got to be grateful for that. So let's talk about why that matters. And the, the truth is finding miracles in our daily lives doesn't really require any special effort. You don't have to work for it. It's simply about opening your mind and your heart and becoming aware of how good your life is in the first crucial step. Gratitude doesn't just feel better. It has documented benefits. And Research, again, has demonstrated that developing the habit of gratitude can improve your physical health, can improve happiness and your mental health while decreasing burnout, depression and anxiety. So instead of really feeling discouraged and pressured about your job, 
you can start to develop a feeling of appreciation on your job while embracing gratitude practices. So, okay, you say, well, that, that's not going to happen. My job's so stressful. But there must be something, the fact that you have a job, you should be grateful for. Even if you just start off with that, you may hate the boss, you may hate the work, but when you start to shift it, that you're really grateful that you actually have money coming in every week. You may start to feel less nervous when dealing with the boss or, or competitive co-workers. And also job security can be focused on the more positive goal of contributing to the company rather than the anxiety of being fired because we don't want to create a cycle of fear of being fired, of not having a job because all that does is create an energy around you that you'll get fired. And then you think, oh, you know, well, what's the point? Because every time I go somewhere, the same thing happens. But there, but if you change that attitude and start to go, I'm really grateful that I have this job and I've got money coming in every week, then things start to shift and change for you. Just, gent just you know, small bits, bite-sized bits. But it's just the start of having that practice. And gratitude also diminishes the feelings of jealousy. So if you're grateful for what you have, there's no reason to feel jealous of what other people have, is there? If anything, seeing what others have may provide motivation for you to work harder to reach that level of success or to purchase that prized item. And the other side of the coin of jealousy is guilt. So you'll also be less likely to feel guilty about what you have because you believe in abundance, providing enough for everyone. If you acknowledge the good, you'll, you're likely to feel less defensive or apologetic for having more. And, you know, that's one of the, the things that we do, isn't it? We have to hide our wealth. Can't let anyone else see it. They might take it away from us or they'll be jealous or I'll lose all my friends. These are all beliefs that we have that stop us from feeling abundant. You know, it's like the multimillionaire going round in his old clothes and his old car and everyone feeling sorry for him, but, you know, like he owns the whole town basically. So he's got enough money to do that. So why do we have to do that? Why can't we enjoy our abundance and share it with others? So... Many people feel they need validation and self-care. But this is difficult if the focus is constantly on other people and what they have and that keeping up with the Smiths, the Joneses mentality keeps us from seeing and appreciating what we have and the good in our lives, you know, like the grass is always greener on the other side. It's not true because the people in the other side think the grass is greener on your side so catch 22 for yourself because then you start on that hamster wheel and you set yourself up in this vicious cycle but it is possible to shift into an abundant mindset it's possible to love the life that you're living and just want more because when we start to appreciate what we do have and as i said in the last module, we live in the most abundant times on this planet ever. And that means we have hot and cold running water, we have electricity, we have a house with walls and windows. We have motor vehicles, we have mobile phones or cell phones, we have television, we, have, we can communicate with people on the other side of the world in an instant. We should be grateful for all of those things. 
and also be mindful of them. So gratitude practice will really help you truly be in the moment and and make the most of your present life. But in today's goal-orientated, world-focused, achievement, needing, we may feel that our best moments are being robbed from us and we are living on automatic, automatic, automatic pilot, that's what I'm trying to say. But there's, there's really no need to put your life on hold to take a break from the stress. We can continue with our day-to-day life and feel more fulfilled because we find things to appreciate from the smell of coffee and fresh bread is a compliment at work. All we need to do is to pay attention to those things, the small things that make life really wonderful there's no need to come up with things to appreciate we just need to open our eyes our ears and our imagination and let those good things come to us and when you're open to the good and aware that you have good in your life you're going to attract more good things and that's the law of attraction but it's not some dry theory and if you hear a noise in the background that's probably my dog snoring because she's gone to sleep (laughs) So when you open your life up with gratitude practice, you notice that more opportunities do become available. First, because you'll be more aware of them and second, because good breeds good. That's the way the law works. So how do we develop that attitude of gratitude? So the steps to cultivating an abundance mindset through gratitude is to write down five things that you're grateful for. Do it every morning. And how do you start your day? It can have a huge influence on how you feel, morning, noon and evening. So when you wake up, you should write five things that you're grateful for and don't overthink it. They can be large, small, like I said, like I'm I'm awake, I'm breathing. (laughs) You can do it at night if you want, if you prefer. And there's even apps that you can do it with to remind you. The second thing is you can take time during the day to feel grateful. You know, put it in your diary because we always schedule time for coffee with friends or to go to the gym and work out. So why not also schedule a gratitude time? So set a timer on your phone for a specific time every day and stop whatever you're doing and just think of five things that you're grateful for. Or just take short breaks in, you know, while you're working during the day and count your blessings and be grateful that you've got clients or grateful that you've made sales and just close your eyes for a moment and just go, wow, you know, I'm so grateful that I can do this. And then maybe pick a day of the week when you feel less rushed and sit down and write everything you're grateful for for the week. And and you never know what patterns that you didn't notice will show up. So maybe new clients or book sales or maybe that your business has increased since you started doing it. The next thing that you can do is express your gratitude. Write letters or notes to people you're grateful for two and four, and express your thanks and appreciation. And just tell one person a week that you feel grateful towards them and why. And it's a good idea to keep your lists or journals and review them periodically because this will have a compounding effect on your abundance mindset. So not only will you come up with new things every day to appreciate, but you can take the long-term view by consulting the past things that you've written down an increase in your feeling of abundance. And one of the things you can be grateful for is the gratitude practice in itself. Changing the way you look at things and cultivating appreciation with daily practice will cause you to notice things more. It will cause you to notice 
Why? You feel fuller, more complete, as in fuller of gratitude, of joy, of happiness. Your food tastes better. You feel more pleased with with the achievements that you made and more relaxed in the company of family and friends. You know, especially when you're feeling jaded because nothing's working, when you just start to appreciate and be grateful for the fact that you're able to offer your services or offer your products, <laughs> even if you've only made one sale or one person's interested. You can be grateful for that. And the more pleased you are and more grateful for you are, you'll notice that things start to shift and change. I mean, there's a lot more to this, obviously, as we work through it. So when you start to see that abundance show up in your life and you feel the positive energy it brings, it's so easy to share it with others. And you can think of ways you can pay it forward so others can receive abundance. There's hundreds of ideas, like paying for a coffee for the next person in the dry, you know, at the coffee shop. Or leaving a small container of baby wipes on it on the changing table for the next mum with a note of encouragement. There's lots of things that just little things that you can do to pay it forward. And sometimes it's the smallest efforts that bring the biggest results, both to you and the one who's receiving it. And with these random acts of kindness, you also have an automatic thing to put in your gratitude journal don't you giving is not solely about the giver and the gifts should be given out of goodness of the goodness of your heart not through obligation however giving can make you feel good so why not add that to your gratitude journal and if someone gives something to you be grateful for it be honored and accept it in the way that it's given. It's not through obligation or anything. If someone just does a random act and gives you a present, be grateful that they're doing it for you because how, what an honour that is to have it done. So it works both ways, whether you're the giver or the receiver. And Some people find this really difficult because they're deep in scarcity mindset or they're what's in it for that other person to do this mindset or I don't deserve mindset. So how else do you find things to feel grateful for? So there's no shoulds or things when to come up with, but These sorts of things, as an example, can stimulate your gratitude mindset. Large and small kindnesses that you've received on the day or in the past, things in your environment, major and minor experiences, sensations, relationships, people, surprises, your own random acts of kindness. There are so many kindnesses we experience each day that we may not even be aware of, and often we get up go to work on on automatic pilot and we don't even notice the barista who was especially pleasant and considerate or a co-worker who complimented you on your clothes. And during the day our headspace is so cluttered that we we overlook these things and the gratitude practice is a good time to recall and appreciate them. And, And really when you think about it, It doesn't have to be much. It can be a kind word to someone else. And you don't know the effect that's going to have on that person. For example, my husband always tells people how beautiful they look. What a lovely dress you're wearing today. He does it to complete strangers. So those random acts where he, where he tells people how gorgeous they are. There's another dog snoring there. Um, And you don't know the impact on that random act. 
So one day someone came to our door and when she found out that that's where my husband, obviously we both lived, she said what he said to her that day saved her life because she was ready to commit suicide and because he was just giving from the heart and telling her how beautiful she was and what a lovely dress she was wearing, it's had such an impact on her that it it helped her change her attitude. So we just don't know the effect those random acts of gratitude, those random acts of kindness have on other people and on ourselves. So we can be grateful for things in in our environment, the sunrises, the sunsets, the handicrafts, the comments. We can also be grateful for all the wonderful experiences, the trips, the adventures, the fun. Even, you know, you might try a different kind of flavoured coffee or you might have gone out to dinner and it was just exceptional. Could be the highlight of your day and it's the thing that you'll always remember how how beautiful it was and you've never found the same you know food since whatever. And always think of those things and be grateful that we've had that experience. And what about for some people the smell of a new car or the sound of rain on the rooftop or the, or the smell in the air after a storm or a child's laugh. They can make us feel happy and grateful. You can also feel grateful for relationships that enrich your life, such as your spouse, your partner, your best friend, your children, your, co- your cousin, you know, or anyone's children. Because... You have a wonderful relationship with them. And feel grateful for surprises such as praise or or birth surprise parties or things that we don't even think of and all of a sudden you get a message even on social media of appreciation or someone sends you an email or a card to appreciate you. And gratitude practice trains you to trains you to look for things to be grateful for in your daily life. And soon you'll notice things in your life that will give you that sense of appreciation. And the point of the practice is that noticing the good in your life will become second nature to the point where having a positive attitude will be instinctive for you. And the gratefulness practice will create a habit of looking the situations and people in a positive way and attracting situations and people. And you'll start to see what's going right rather than being obsessed with what's going wrong. So instead of being a victim of circumstance, there's a silver lining. And you'll develop that abundance mindset rather than scarcity because you've got gratitude as the foundation. And really it's really important not to just be grateful for external things, but also feel grateful for really the person that you are. We don't just celebrate the details of our life and the things around us, but we should be grateful for us for who we are because we're really blessed to be here at this time even though lots of things are happening on the planet we're here for a reason the fact that you woke up to another day is as I said before is something to be grateful for so really how do you celebrate yourself how do you celebrate you And one of the ways is to start with your strengths. We're so obsessed with self-improvement and achievement, we tend to look at ourselves as needing fixing or that we have to have certain results in order to be successful. And we 
or scrutinize ourselves to find things to improve because we think that we're broken and we need to be fixed, but it's not true. But it's really important to appreciate our strengths and abilities that we already have. Sure, sure we always want to improve, don't we? But we're not broken and we don't need to be fixed. Why not explore who we are so that we're better at who we are all the time? But society has encouraged us that we need to achieve and always to be reaching higher. It's, there's no right or wrong with that except for the pressure it can put us under that we're not good enough, that we're broken, that we need to be fixed. But what if instead we focus on just who we are and learning who we are and what are the things that cause us to be resistant to creating what it is that we love? So sometimes the best way forward is to focus carefully on where we are. And once we know where we are is solid ground, we, we can progress even better and notice the good things that come to us. And having solid knowledge on what we're good at and what others appreciate about, about us and what we contribute to ourselves is the step that we take to being resilient, to being strong, to being creative. And when we start to appreciate all those beautiful things about us, then we start to be even more abundant. Because we're so busy rushing to improve before appreciating that the changes are unsustainable. I'm sure you know that you've done every course, done every program, you've done NLP, you've done tapping, you've done EFT, TFT, you've done, I don't know, there's so many modalities now. And, and But we keep going back and forming, going back into the old cycle. But once we truly know and appreciate ourselves, we're able to take the steps and once we make the right choices and we work with it and we're in alignment, then we take the steps to be more productive. So taking personal inventory isn't just a list of things we need to change. No, it's not that at all. But it's things we need to enhance and feel grateful for. So when contemplating your strengths, measure what you feel your skills and talents are, plus ask other people what they think your skills are, what you're really good at, what do they love about you. So start paying attention to the compliments you receive spontaneously and sincerely. Do people ask you advice for certain things? Do they do that consistently? Are you known for certain things? And start to write down a list of those strengths and take some time to think about the things you do well and your talents and realise that they are your gifts and part of your uniqueness. And also allow you to approach others with a feeling of self-assurance which can help with creating a great impression but what if you aren't sure what your strengths are well you can always ask yourself what's the best use of my time what can I do or do I do to add value to other people's lives what do I love to do what do I do well what do I get complimented on or asked for help with Because these strengths don't have to be connected to what you do for a living. They can be personal qualities that are not specifically related to any activities. 
at all. Like being cool, like being witty. Don't know about sarcastic. It could be a strength or not. So think about ways you celebrate who you are and what's good about you. And the next tip I'm going to give you might seem counterintuitive, but stop trying to excel at everything. Personal development is important. You might think that cultivating a feeling of abundance means trying to achieve more, but that's not true. It's about knowing that there's more than enough for everybody. And overachievement can mean really that you've still got a scarcity mindset. If you feel there isn't enough to go around and you won't succeed without overachieving, it can be due to a lack of confidence rather than abundance. And if you believe there isn't enough for everyone, you're more likely to be competitive when a situation requires cooperation. An abundance mindset includes the faith that there is enough for everyone and can feel confident while allowing you to work with others rather than against them. And once you stop comparing yourself to everyone else, you won't end up with extra things you don't want or need and can focus on the things, the people, the activities that make you feel complete and fulfilled. You'll also feel more patient. You won't expect to get everything now, even though we want everything yesterday. And you'll have the faith that everything is intended will come to you eventually. Some things don't come instantly. One of the things about being a conscious creator is that we can have our choices of our desired reality. But it may not come today, tomorrow, this year. It may take three years or four years to come. But you have the faith that everything is intended, that is intended for you, that you've chosen, will come to you eventually. And you're capable of receiving it when the time's right. And having more gratitude will enable you to truly celebrate the successes <laughs> instead of feeling entitled to them. There's a big difference to that sense of entitlement to the gratitude of celebrating those choices when you achieve them. And you'll be more likely to succeed when you take care of what you already do have instead of focusing on what's lacking. So ask yourself how well you're taking care of yourself. How well do you nurture you? How well do you look after you? Do you take time out for you? How well do you take care of your possessions, your meaningful relationships, your resources, such as time, such as money? And when you look at that, do you give it all away? Are you always giving away your time? Are you always giving away yourself to everyone else? Are you always giving away possessions? The key to enjoy and use what you already own before worrying about getting more is to be grateful for what you have now and to nurture it. You can do this by wearing that special outfit or use that fancy item or that nice jacket or that nice makeup or that lovely watch. You don't have to do it every single day. But just one day, maybe one day a week or one day a month or and just do things and be grateful for the possessions, the clothes, the things that you have and start to wear them. Make a decision that you're going to use them maybe one day a week. Wear something that you love. And and why not splurge on a good quality product 
knowing that will last you longer and be more effective than buying 10 cheap ones. It's just about that care and nurture of you so that you start to feel abundant, that you deserve the quality and you invest in yourself rather than exhausting resources on unnecessary things. So maybe in order to get that special thing, you need to cut back on other things for a few weeks to get it. And the theory of attraction means that getting accustomed to enjoying these special things means that you will attract more of them and make them part of your life. It's about the be it. Be it to see to see it. And there's no need to wait for someone else or an invitation before you permit yourself to enjoy the fine things you own. Really cultivating that abundant mindset involves total awareness. Sorry about that. So you can eventually attract more things, people, opportunities to appreciate it. It's a virtuous cycle that grows and grows. And the last part of today is don't compare. Comparisons really are just about our own wounds and desires. We all love games and contests and there's the thrill, the com competition that feels addictive, especially if you like to win at all costs. Um, and the competitive attitude is often defended because it pressures people to perform at their highest level and it makes us feel incomplete or inadequate if we don't win or do well. And competition certainly has its uses but it, it should not become the defining aspect of our lives. But how do we use it? How do we use it? It's a competition for appreciation, sustainable achievement. Appreciation is more essential, I think, for sustainable achievement and fulfilment. So when you make appreciation the defining aspect of your life, by using the gratitude practice, you will not need to fire up competitive impulses to reach your goal, to feel confident because you already are it. And once you stop comparing yourself to everyone else and focus on your strengths and your talents, you feel calmer, you feel more competent and other people find you easier to work with and you find yourself easier to work with. And, you know, people that are worried that focusing on your own strengths and appreciating your favourite skills may make you self-centred, but really the result's the opposite. When we focus on others with a competitive frame of mind, whether we realise it or not, we're communicating anxiety to them that they're not on our team because we have to be better than, than them. And, and you become like, well, I'll do it myself because nobody else can do it as good as me. But when we appreciate our strengths and look to others for information on how we can be helpful rather than a basis of comparison, we find an improvement in our working and personal relationships because our strengths are what we're really good at. And when you're working in a team, everyone works to their strengths and we become more successful. We're more approachable, we're less defensive, we're more cheerful, we're easier to talk to and to work with. So as we develop that attitude of appreciation, opportunities open up because people intuitively sense that we're confident, we're easy to work with. We, we play to our strengths rather than being anxious and fearful. And then we're more likely to make suggestions, share information and bring more good to your life. So good things come to those who wait, but good 
things come to those that appreciate. So talking about the abundance mindset, we're really talking about attraction theory. And the principle behind attraction theory is that a positive attitude will attract good things to you. There's no mystical concept behind it because it's a cause and effect relationship. So adopting that attitude of expressing gratitude and finding things to appreciate causes us to relax, feel more confident, attract more friendship, leads and opportunities. We'll have to stop fighting ourselves and have to go running after our goals because when we're in alignment with ourselves, when we're confident and grateful and appreciate all the best parts of us, we're preparing ourselves for good things and we have that positive mindset, that frame of mind good things start to come. And when you appreciate the things that you have, makes us more efficient. We become more apt to make the most of what we own, whether it's clothes, money, time or tools. A throwaway mindset, and, you know, let's face it, we've turned into a throwaway, (laughs) throwaway society. is often accompanied by the feeling that one is not good enough because we always have to have the latest. We can't keep what's older. And it can be defeatist because it's always comparing or looking ahead what's the next season going to bring. And unfortunately, that's a society issue that we're programmed now. But staying focused on abundance in the moment and appreciating what you but you have now will encourage you to use your resources to the best advantage. How how can I shift and change? And that gives you more satisfaction. It improves your chances of success because you're more efficient, you're more conscious. You don't have to outperform. To live an abundant life, you have to enjoy your life now. You have to be it to see it. No one ever has an easy or smooth life. The more you can appreciate the present moment and all that you have now, you just want more of that. And the more you'll attract good things and the happier that you feel. So it it prevents you from forfeiting the present for the sake of the future or a future that sacrificed for a distant future. So why not enjoy the moments that you have now and live it rather than trying to live in the future where you don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen next week or tomorrow. We can have our choices, we have um, desired reality that we know, but knowing where we are now, where we stand and having gratitude for what we own and our abilities creates happiness and satisfaction in the present moment. And that's the true springboard for a more successful future. So start today. Start that gratitude practice. Hone the skill of appreciation that will bring that abundance to your life and take the small steps to appreciate every day and just see what happens, see the changes. See the changes. So I gave you a morning ritual to do. And I'll just share my screen. Where you can start to practice. 
So this gives you current outcome. What am I focused on? What's my actions? What am I grateful for? How did I wake up this morning? What things have triggered me today or yesterday? And start to do this. What other tasks do I get to do? And then this is just, have I had enough to drink? Have I eaten well? Have I done my meditation? What have I learned today? And what ideas do I have? So this just goes along with your workbook where you also have right to five things that you're grateful for in your own life. In the areas that you're identified, write down your strengths. How well are you taking care of yourself? These questions are in the journal for you to fill out. So how well are you using your current resources? So start to fill these out or write them down in your own diary so that you can get a clue about where you're going and what you're doing and who you are and how you want to be. And there's homework again today, choose the destiny, move your body, express your gratitude, celebrate your successes. So make sure you do your homework. And, and tomorrow we're going to do creating the correct structure. So we're moving even deeper into where we're going. So to finish off today, I want you to just sit back, close your eyes. And I want to take you on a little journey to help stabilize your energy field. So we're going to go a little over time. Because it's just coming up to the hour. So when you're ready, closing your eyes. And this is a pyramid meditation and it's just designed to help to stabilize your energy field. And the more that you do this, the more stable your energy field becomes, the easier it is to be who you are. That's it. Just taking some beautiful big deep breaths knowing that those three big breaths are assigned to our autonomic nervous system, our vagus nerve, to relax. And just concentrating on deep relaxation. Knowing the deep breathing is a signal for our body to relax. Just imagine that you're floating in this beautiful space. There's clear skies around you and below you there's clouds. They're like fluffy balls of cotton wool ready to catch you, to support you. And just noticing as you're floating around in the clouds, above the clouds, there's a, there's a hole that appears in one of the clouds. And as you look down through that hole, you see a really inviting space, this beautiful hill or knoll that's covered in lush green grass. part of a beautiful valley and the grass is cut just to the right height 
and it looks so inviting that you decide to go down. So you float gently down, landing on the top of the hill, knowing this is a special place, a place for you, your safe place. And as you look around, you notice from the left to the right is a stream flowing down the bottom of the valley. And there's lovely rolling hills all around. And as you look around to the right, you see a beautiful lake that's shimmering in the sun. And there's that, just that beautiful slight breeze that makes the water look like it's covered in beautiful diamond sparkle. And you feel that beautiful sensation on your face. It's just enough, just the right temperature. Just feels really beautiful. That's it. And as you look down, as your awareness and your focus improves, you notice down the bottom of the hill is a pyramid, four-sided pyramid. And as it becomes more into focus, you notice that there's a path that leads from one side of the pyramid up the hill and ends down at your feet. So you go and take the steps on that path, becoming more relaxed as you wend your way down, down the hill to the pyramid. And as you get closer, you just notice what's the pyramid made out of? Is it glass or stone or crystal or metal, whatever material is it, something that you know of or you've never seen before? Ah, <sighs> just, wow, it's beautiful. And you get to the outside of the pyramid so you put your hand on the pyramid to feel what it feels like to get the sense of how the surface feels. That's it. And as you put your hand on the pyramid, a door opens on the face of that pyramid. And so as the door opens, you decide to go in. And as you step inside that pyramid, the door, the door gently closes behind you and inside is all your team in spirit of the highest light and resonance all waiting to greet you. And you just notice what the inside of the pyramid is made of. And as you look around, you notice in the middle of the pyramid is this beautiful couch. So you float over to that couch and you lie down because it's just right, just made for you. Just feels just really so comfortable and it's even more relaxing than it was before. And as you lay back, you look up and as you look up, you notice there's this beautiful crystal capstone on the top of the pyramid and coming through that capstone is this beautiful light, this beautiful golden river of love, of light and of life. And it comes down through the pyramid, filling the pyramid and joining with this beautiful diamond and crystalline energy that are coming up through the floor, through the base of the pyramid. Mending together, melding together. And they come down through the top of your head, filling up your whole body, down through your head, your neck, your shoulders. 
down into your arms, out through your fingers, down through your chest, your abdomen, down through your legs, out through your toes and your feet. Filling up your whole body, your whole energy field with this beautiful, healing, loving energy. And as you're lying there, relaxing, enjoying the sensation and feeling, you notice between your ankle is an octahedron, which is two pyramids joined together at the base. <laughs> and they're like a spinning top. And you just notice the way that they're spinning. Are they fast or slow? Are they off to one side? Are they going backwards or forward? And so with that beautiful energy that's coming through you, you rebalance that pyramid. It rebalances and it starts to spin in the correct spin. And it gets faster and faster and faster. And the faster it becomes, the more stable it becomes. And then you move up and you notice between your knees is the next pyramid. And again, you notice what angle, spin, whether it's going backwards or forwards. And again, that beautiful energy aligns it, making sure that it's in alignment and the correct spin. And it starts to spin faster and faster. So the ankle one's spinning really fast and is stabilized in that spin. And now the one between your knees is stabilized in that spin and spinning faster and faster. And as it spins faster and faster, we move up into your abdomen in your tantien. And again, we notice the pyramid and, it, and how it's spinning. So again, with the energies we get to stabilize it, to ensure that it's spinning in the right direction, and it's spinning straight and true and spinning faster and faster and faster. So our ankles are spinning fast and true, the knees are spinning fast and true, and now the abdomen's spinning fast and true. So they're all three in alignment and spinning, stabilizing the field. We move into the chest area, the heart. And again, we notice the spin of this pyramid. And again, bringing it into alignment and correct spin and seeing it spin faster and faster. Spinning as fast as it needs to spin, as it spins straight and true, to be in alignment with the ankles, the knees, the pantheon, the chest. Next, it moves up the energy into your throat and the spinning of that pyramid, becoming in alignment, spinning faster. And faster and faster and coming up into the head. The last pyramid. Seeing this one in alignment again and spinning faster and faster. So the ankles, the knees, the tantien, the heart, throat and the head 
are all spinning in alignment faster and faster and as they spin they stabilize the whole energy field spinning out what's no longer required and spinning in the beautiful energies of higher light and resonance that you can tolerate at this time and now that they're all spinning in alignment I want you to think about your choices, about being abundant, about having abundance and prosperity in all areas of your life. And I want you to picture what it looks like, having that abundance and being it, to see it. And what does it feel like for you? Can you feel the joy, the happiness, the gratitude, the awareness, the connection? Because this is about you. This is not about anybody else. Because when we're choosing, we're choosing for ourselves. We can't choose for anyone else because we all each have our own choices. And not everyone's choices are in alignment with ours. And we can't put on what we want on other people. We can have it in our life for ourselves. And that's not being greedy, not being self-centered. It's just the way it is. And when we're in that, creative mode and creating the life that we love that creating that abundant joyful happy life it provides that joy abundance and happiness for others just because just because we're doing it for ourselves and we can share it with others it's a choice so just taking all of that as you lie on that most comfortable couch and just feeling all the energy as your whole field stabilizes and just asking yourself while you're in that energy, what's my next step on this journey of abundance and prosperity, of more flow, more fun, more money? just allowing it all to come to you it may not come while you're in the pyramid it may come in your dreams it may come in your meditation it may come when you're sitting quietly in contemplation it may come in any form and just know that it is Ah, oh, feels so good. And now, when you're ready, just coming back into your body in the pyramid on that chair, on that couch. You're feeling really grateful for being here in this time, in this space of having access to all this information. And when you're ready, just come off the couch and float over, thanking all your team in spirit. Over, floating over to the wall. You step out, back into that beautiful valley. And as you turn and say goodbye, for the moment, you start to walk up the hill, back to the top of the hill. And then coming back into the room, wherever you are, back into your body, knowing that we started the process 
of stabilizing, of shifting, of changing, of becoming. Taking some big deep breaths, opening your eyes, <sighs> moving your body. Ah, I'm getting ready for whatever's next for you. So that's today's episode, that's today's module. So the next thing is module three. I'm looking forward to that. And that should be fantastic. I've lost my place. So I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station. If, if you're watching the replay, um, you can uh, have access uh, tomorrow for the next module. And I hope you have the best week. Bye for now. <laughs>